that is non traditional security <laughs> yeah thank you uh, good evening <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen at the outset let me thank uh, dr Bar mr bharat of indo analytics and the staff for getting us over here to share a few thoughts of ours today there was a very passionate speech by mr proful before that can do it as well as the major sir uh, what i am going to do i am going to take this beyond india and see how the security issues are going to shift towards 2030 and i am going to talk about four paradigms the external paradigm the internal paradigm about which a lot of things have been spoken and also the third paradigm is traditional security and non traditional security and how do they interplay this is something that we need to understand when you deal with national security because if you are looking at only one aspect of it you are going to miss the trees for the miss the woods for the tree so this is something that i'm going to cover i'll cover it quickly and shortly and each slide will be there for some time i'm not going to speak about the entire slide because each slide can be a full lecture of one hour so i'm going to just give you a glimpse of that slide and speak about a point or two so that i can finish in time okay next please <clears throat> so we talked about national security what are the national security objectives if you look at the first three they are talking about external security if you look at the last two they are talking about internal security wherein we look at the equitable prosperous and shields them from risks of life and livelihood this is internal the previous one is also internal so national security objectives have got an external connect and the internal connect next please how do you see the external security environment in 2030 us is likely to reduce in influence it has been re reducing in influence for some time now it is likely to further reduce but it is not going to be weak it is going to only reduce its influence by a notch but the other aspect is important china is likely to increase its influence why am i saying this please click on the word china you look at the we talked about vasco da gama we talked about everybody else you please look at the stars i have marked today china owns or fully or partly stakes in more than 100 ports across the world and all those ports are co connected to the entry and exit points of the seas and there is the same analogy of controlling of the seas that the british used earlier to conquer the world next slide please in addition to this if you have to project power through the through the world you need to create a set of bases so this is how you find the chinese bases have been marked these are the one they have not come up as yet by the way there are rumors of it coming up somewhere partially it is done partially it is being built up but it is happening so this is something that you need to keep in mind the third thing next slide please china launched something known as a global security initiative in april of this year in 2022 mr xi jinping himself announced this okay what does it involve please understand the objective what i have given here what it simply says is china wants to promote an alternative security architecture in the world to the existing one so if that is the case then how do they do that is what is given in the china's initiatives what all initiatives they have already taken to do this is what is being given here it doesn't end here there is another slide next slide please the initiatives continue so there are many initiatives that they have taken which would help them to ensure that they create an alternative security architecture in the world now go and click on the title it will go back to the original slide yeah russia ukraine campaign it's one year already right so therefore it is going to continue for some more time but there's no end in sight how will it end my this i am sticking my neck out here my own understanding is 
it will end in an armistice. What is an armistice? No peace, no war. Means we are still at war, but we are not fighting. That is precisely what has happened between North Korea and the US. Right? Why I am saying this? We are looking at 2030 and beyond. That is seven years from now. So war fatigue will set in at some point in time. Both the sides will have to come to some kind of an understanding and this is probably the way it could continue. Europe and NATO, they are not going to change their threat perception. And what is the threat perception? Their threat perception is their first security threat comes from Russia. China is nowhere on the horizon because geographically they are apart and they feel that China will not be able to pose a security threat to them. Therefore, they are not going to change that perception anytime soon. Neighborhood less Pakistan. What do you mean by that? All the neighborhood other than Pakistan, they are likely to be more inclined towards India. Why am I saying it? Uh, my friend here talked about Sri Lanka and how we bailed them out in the recent crisis that they have had. You take any country around us today, taking from Afghanistan, Nepal. Nepal was slightly going towards China, but then things are still being worked out and they are likely to be more leaning towards Nepal. Us, I was in Nepal three months ago. There is a clear-cut understanding that trade with China is a no-go. Trade has to take place through India because of the geographical geographical reasons and other reasons, actually speaking. So, you find each country, if you look at them, and the amount of aid, the amount of loans, the amount of um, lines of credit that we have extended in the last 10 years is more than double of what we have done in the last 60 years. So, they understand who is the helping hand, who comes in terms of necessity, who is the first responder we talked about. So that is something that we need to keep in mind. ASEAN. ASEAN countries are hedging between US and China. They do not want to take any side. If you look at their policy uh, on Indo-Pacific, it clearly mentioned that they do not want to take sides between US and China. And therefore, they are likely to be ambivalent. They are not going to shift that position because they are small countries. They fear for their security and survivability and so therefore, they are not going to change that particular uh, particular thing. And lastly, contest in Africa and South America is going to increase. Why am I saying it? I know there is a remark there. There is a reaction to what I said. The reason for that is very simple. Today is a world where we are competing for resources. We are competing for rare earth material. We are competing for agricultural products. And these two continents uh, have abundance of them. So therefore, the contest will be there in these two continents. Next, please. That was external security environment. How do you see internal security environment in 2030? You look at JNK. JNK is likely to become more stable in the next five to seven years. Even in the last two years, you find more stability coming into JNK. When I say JNK, it's a state. It was a state earlier. Now it is two union territories. I mean both of them. Okay? And by the way, there's another soldier who has gone as Lieutenant Governor of uh, Ladakh, Bridget Mishra, who is from my regiment, by the way. Northeast is likely to become more normal, less Manipur. The reason why I am saying that, the insurgency levels are low in the Northeast today. In many districts, the Armed Forces Special Powers Act has been lifted. Manipur is a different ball game and the reason for that is there are too many groups operating there even if you negotiate with some groups the other groups are not going to play ball. So you find Manipur to be the problem as far as Northeast is concerned. Left wing extremism which you talk about Maoists etc. In we initially a few years ago we talked about 728 districts which were dominated by Maoists you don't hear it anymore. In fact, the levels are low and further it is going to reduce. Terrorism was talked about. I am not going to talk more about it. We all understand what it is. Illegal migration was talked about by Prafulji. But despite what he said, I feel this is going to be a problem that we need to be contending with. Okay? 
border infrastructure improvement is likely to take place. Radicalization was talked about. This is something serious that we need to be understanding. I'm not talking about a particular religion. I'm not talking about anything. Radicalization of an idea is something that we need to be contending with. And that, I'm not talking about any particular religion at all, any particular sect at all. In every, every religion, every sect, radicalization is something that we need to be looking at very carefully. Social media is going to become much more powerful. Few years ago, you found all the Northeast personnel moved out of Bangalore to Northeast basically because some social media thing started from Pakistan. So, social media is going to be a far more powerful tool in the hands of people who want to play hell with us. So, please, that is something, that is why, you know, the typical thing is the moment you see in a WhatsApp, we just forward it. You don't know who has sent it, you know what is the content of it, you just keep forwarding it to your groups and then you know it keeps spreading. Okay? Corruption and disaster management is, are something that you need to be looking at as far as internal security environment is concerned. Next please. Now developments, what developments are taking place in the security field? On the left hand side I have told about traditional, I talked about four things, right? External, internal, traditional and non-traditional. Traditional things I have left, I have keep, kept on the left. You find that some time ago we were talking about only short wars. Russia Ukraine campaign has proved that to be wrong. So you need to be prepared for long wars, conventional wars. Increase in the use of high tech weapons. You see the kind of weapon that get used today in Ukraine. Effort on innovation. Standoff attack is going to be more increasingly becoming a norm. Standoff attack means hand-to-hand -hand fight is going to take place, but the effect of that is going to be brought in by the long, I mean, um, standoff weapons that we are going to use. Grey zone warfare. How many of you understand what is the word grey zone warfare? Good. Then I can tell you, one, in two lines I can tell you what grey zone warfare is. Grey zone warfare is simply, it is not a proper combat. Like what, see, you see in a bat battlefield, you wage this war during peace and war through other means, like cyber attacks, like uh, influence operations, many a thing you can do, and it is not attributable. Like for example, if China does it on India, it cannot be attributed back to China. It is done in a way that it is not, not actually been attributable. Okay? The next one is on the, uh, on the multi-domain warfare. These are terminologies you will find in warfare. Don't get very confused about it. It is very simple. Multi-domain means everything put into it. Okay? Just click on that line, multi-domain warfare. Now you see this slide. This is a visualization I have done basically to explain to you what a multi-domain warfare is. Please look at that PLA SSF, that is the PLA Strategic Support Force of the Chinese, which, is, which has got a command over space and influence operations of China. You get quantum technology, you get Navy, you get um, Air Force, you get the biohazard, which happened like COVID, it can happen again in the battlefield. You have any number of domain that you need to be fighting with. So this is a multi-domain warfare which we have to fight in years to come. So this is something that I wanted to explain to you. Go on, pick to, on the title. Click on the title, yeah. The next one is nuclear. Nuclear is also in the traditional domain, and so I kept it in the traditional domain. Nuclear, please don't worry, just click on it, I'll move on straight away. This is the nuclear security that we talk about. We are aware that it can happen everywhere. We've got 25 stations which monitor the radiological impact, and that is constantly working. So don't worry about nuclear issues anymore. Go back to title and, yeah. And therefore, I've talked about one on the plurilateral and minilaterals. Let me explain this to you in one minute, uh, 30 seconds to be precise. Today, we feel that the multilateral things are not working. What is multilateral? UN organization is multilateral. NATO is multilateral. There are other groups which have got large number of countries which are multilateral. They are becoming more and more ineffective. Therefore, you have gone into mode, particularly India has gone into the mode, of plurilaterals and mini 